and we're gonna do the whole settings video in one take. So first up, it's important to separate your glider and jump keybinds onto separate keys so that you don't accidentally glide and get spiked and die, and you'll get better control of your glider. I started using my mouse button last playtest for glider, and it was a huge help. And now I've put all of my abilities onto my mouse, and I moved glider onto the keyboard again. And it's right next to jump, as you can see with left alt, so my thumb can hit them both without accidentally triggering one or the other. Um, and then the other change that I have, like you'll see I have a bunch of changes like interact on F and stuff, but the other big change that I have is my ultimate is on X, which means that if I'm strafing to the right, I can hit X. And if I'm strafing to the left, I can hit X with the opposite finger both ways, right? And then that same strategy is applied for my powers. So my powers are set to Q and E and Z and C, because if I'm strafing left, I can hit the top or bottom, right? And if I'm strafing right, I can hit the top or bottom. So this would be with uh, ring finger and index finger. So this way I can always keep my character moving while I'm doing things. And then the other suggestion that I have for keybinds is to put your sneak somewhere that you can always hit it because you're gonna have so many fights that are chaotic and everything is breaking it all around you and you're like fighting a guy close and you're looking at the map to see who's doing what, but it also helps to just be able to do this so that you can see who's using what abilities. Right, so like you should be always using this every time you like, you know, you're fighting this guy, he dashes out and takes off, and you don't want to dash after him. You hit this button to like get a feel for the surroundings, and then obviously you can see we're going to need to go into how the camera moves later, but we'll get there. But that's all for the keybinds. Actually, we can mention this other one right now too. Uh, you can see all my keybinds here if you want to like play it in slow motion or pause the video or whatever. These are what I have set up. But another keybind that's important to note is the voice. So if you're using open mic, I suggest using open mic, but you might want to use mute. So set your mute button in this tab, the voice tab, and the keybinds tab to be the same. Because I'm not too sure about uh, what will happen if you have them on different bindings, but it's consistent if you do this. Because last playtest, I had a moment where my mic was red and it was saying I was muted, and then I would talk and my teammates would hear me, and like I wasn't in a party with them. I don't know what happened, but it was being buggy. But this has seemed to fix it, so something to note. And your mic is default set to open mic, so you can change that too. Um, so that's it for voice also. We'll skip voice later. So then for movement in game settings, you have your two WASD options. Your first one prioritizes your cursor if it's close, and your second one prioritizes your movement input, but will fall back to cursor if you don't have any. So like right here, my cursor is above me, but I'm inputting down, I press my dash, I go down. But if I have no input and I press my dash, I go up. So I believe that this is the better way. But the reason why the first option exists is because if you want it to dash out of the eight directions, so you know you have like eight directions, right? That you can move your character. And so this allows you to dash in a full 360 by, you know, being perfectly accurate to your cursor. I don't think it's worth it based on the chance that you could dash the wrong way if you have your cursor close to you and you like, you know, you're strafing or something and then you accidentally dash in and now you're dead i don't think it's worth it i think it's better to have it on fall back to cursor um show all equipment i'm not too sure what it does on or off i think these are important turn all of your opacities up to one and then our aiming lasers are important so you might be thinking that they're the same thing but hitboxes in this game are a little bit weird and you should have the aiming laser on hero turned off and then you should have the show aiming laser turned on because the show aiming laser lets you see 
where your bullet's gonna come from. Like, it looks weird because it's like kind of disconnected from your body. Like you can see right on the ledge how it makes like a 90 degree, but it'll show you how your arrow is gonna shoot, as you can see right there. And then you also want your laser opacity turned up, your show enemy heights up, your ground up. On the video is really preference, whatever you want. I had this turned down, but I guess I didn't hit apply, so it didn't save. But it really doesn't matter. I have it all on low with character or sorry, epic qual or effects quality on epic. And then I just turned image sharpening to strong, but I might turn it back, uh, you know, just whatever you think is best, whatever your computer can run, whatever you like. Same with audio. There's really nothing special in here. Just whatever you like. And then voice we've already covered. And then camera. So this is important too, because your camera is your vision. You're going to start with standard dynamic, but standard dynamic doesn't actually go all the way. It only pans 60%. So you can't like, see, I can only see to this dot right here, but if you change it to fully dynamic, now you can pan the whole 100% distance. So you can see way past this dot, not really way past, but a little bit more, but then I have it changed so that I'm fully dynamic. So this is where a lot of you league players, I know, especially on my YouTube channel, I want to have a lot of league players watching. Um, it's important to bring your DPI down. You got to have a low DPI in this game because on league, you need a high DPI to be constantly flicking back and forth. But with this game, you're really just keeping your mouse here. Like I brought my DPI down from 1600 down to 400 to play this game. And you're probably thinking like everyone's begging for an in-game sensitivity slider. But I heard that there's something wrong with how the game reads your sensitivity because of how the camera is moving, that it's like super hard for them to code it in. So I'm not sure if they're working on it, but I know a lot of people are requesting it. So regardless, you're going to want really low sense for this game. And these are my, uh, my settings at the moment with 400 DPI. And the reason why you don't want your max zone to be one is because you would think that this means that you have perfect vision from zero to one all the way to the outside. But I think that the game kind of reads like a circle. So what happens is like, see how right here, my camera is not moving any further because the dead zone's like here. But if you go here, then it's right on the very edge. So anyway, I would suggest never putting this to one. Always put it to like 0 0.9 or even lower like I have. And then I try to keep my cursor close to myself. So like this, no movement. And then everything else is fine. You can mess with this if you're doing spectating and stuff in the future. And obviously I don't recommend locked cam. There are some people that like to have the dead zone around their character out to like 0.4 so that their camera is not moving when they're in close combat fighting, but it doesn't bother me. It could be because they're once again on high DPI or who knows, it could be something you want to do too. It's just preference. Cursor scale, so I wrote in my notes. Cursor scale can be as small as you want as long as you never lose track of where it is. Like if you ever have to have that brief second where you don't know where your cursor is, it's too small, make it bigger. And it can be as big as you want as long as it never blocks vision. Like, oh, I didn't know that guy was ulting. My cursor's in the way. But I mean, you'd have to have it maxed for that. So anywhere in the middle is fine. And then as far as color, just Try them all, whatever color you like the most. Some colors are going to be better in certain terrains. I've been liking yellow, but I might swap it again soon. And then we have ability tracking. So you have the ability to see your cooldowns here. So when I ultimate, that green dot's going to go away, telling me that my ult's on cooldown on the top, right? Do the same thing with this one. And then when they come back off cooldown, I have my dots back. But really, just look down here in my opinion. So, I mean, turn on whatever you like, it doesn't matter. I think show hit confirm effect is good. It's just like a hit marker if you play like 
FPS games. It lets you know if someone's hiding here behind this wall and you hit them with an ability, you'd be getting little hit markers up your cursor. So it's just extra information, in my opinion, it's good to have. Um, I've messed with a lot of different stuff with the auto zoom and the save map zoom and I've turned it on and off. I don't really know what I like yet. So once again, this is preference. Uh, auto zoom makes it so when you're in a game and you press tab, it'll automatically zoom based on how far the storm has progressed. So at the start, you'll be zoomed way out and then when the storm's coming in, it'll keep slowly bringing it in. And if you have auto zoom off, then save map zoom is good because then wherever you left your map is where it'll be the next time that you zoom into it. And if you have them both off, I'm not too sure on the effect. Maybe it's always max zoomed out. I don't know. I've been using them both on right now. I might change it again in the future, but that's how it works. And then this is the important part, which you've probably already wondered how I've done it. Um, your heads up display margins. So normally your screen looks like this where everything's on the very edge. So you want to bring them all in. I've also heard some people are asking for a transparency setting so that you like it's not a like you can't see through the minimap. So if it had some transparency, you'd be able to see like that shot behind the minimap right now. So I'm not too sure if they'll add that in the future. But anyway, I suggest bringing the heads up display margins maxed. The damage effect just shows like when you hit somebody, how long it shows your damage. So if you want to see like how much you hit that guy for, you can turn it up. You can turn it off if you don't care. I have it turned up, but I might change it in the future too. I'm not too sure. Oh, a new player overlay is this thing. Just reminds you how to play the game. It's trash. Turn it off. And uh, then obviously turn up and down whatever you want. So I would say that starting off with this big is okay. So you can see your abilities cooldowns easier. But you risk accidentally clicking and dropping your items if you're fighting. So, especially if you have high DPI and you're like fighting below and you know you're flicking around, you can like drop your items and you know something to think about. If uh, it's just all preference once again, but this is how you do it: you turn this on, and then you can individually change each setting. And then as far as stats, I only check round trip time, which is commonly referred to as ping how long it takes to ping the server and back, and client FPS. So I just set it back to 240, which I maybe sometimes get, not too sure. And then my ping right now on EU is 88, which is pretty good. It's normally a lot higher in game. And then you can separate it. But yeah, that's uh, all the settings. If you have any questions, leave a comment, drop into the Discord. Uh, thanks for watching, like and subscribe, peace.